everybody, and welcome to Adobe Live. I'm Flynn, and I'm very excited to be joined by Dale Bagini. How are you, Dale? I'm doing good, Flynn. Yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm good, mate. It's been a while since we've had you on, so it's good to hang out with you again. Yeah, always. Um, it has been a while. Time flies when you're having fun, though, in lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. How good's lockdown? Um, <laughs> hey, everyone in chat. Uh, hey, RB, uh, Festus, D, uh, Johanna, thank you for joining us as well. Um, if you're watching this um, on YouTube, jump on over to behance.net slash live. You can join the chat because we're going to be interacting with you guys a bit today. Um, we're here, you know, starting our morning here in Sydney, Australia, and uh, there's going to be some interactive elements to today's session. Um, so, yeah, jump in there and say hello and um, let us know how you're doing. You're doing okay. Uh, there's a lot going on in the world right now, so so let's all look look after each other. Um, and let us know how you're doing. We're doing all right over here. So um, uh, here's a quick little look at our mini schedule this week. Feels feels so small when we've only got three on. There might be an extra bonus one on Friday. We'll see how we go. But uh, but here we are with Dale today. It's Wednesday here in Sydney, um, starting our morning with you guys with some illustration. We have Ellen Portis on tomorrow. Uh, very exciting. And then we also have some photography with Andrew Peters. Uh, he's coming in from LA. It's going to be very exciting. He's from Monster Children. Um, kind of finishing off our part of our Monster Children series uh, that we started last week. So stick around, check it out. Um, yeah, cool. I'm just reading chat. Do you mind switching over to Discord before we start? What? I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> hello from LA. Awesome, Tia. That's good to see you. Um, Seth, it's awesome. Great to, great to see you guys. Um, so yeah, Dale, um, just because we haven't had you on for a little while, I thought maybe we'd bring up your bring up your work just to show show the folks. Yeah, sure. Um, where's, what have I done with your desktop? Hmm. Hang on a tick. Sorry, I've just need to quickly bring your desktop in. Sorry about that. Talk amongst yourselves. Oh, yeah. Um, but maybe you can tell us like a little bit about what you do as I'm bringing this bringing this in. Yeah, cool. Um. I guess I'm a bit of a everything kind of guy. I, I dabble in murals. Um, I do digital art a lot. Uh, I'll traditional paint, uh, whatever, whatever really gets the job done. I'm, I'm not a, a picky artist. I like to just explore and, and try new things a, a lot. Um, once we get the, the website up, you can see, um, you can go through it yourself. Um, oh, there's, there's a whole bunch of things in there. Bring there's, it up now. Yeah, here we go. So this is, oh, sorry, this is my Instagram. You can follow me at Art by Dale. Um, you can see in there that it's a it's a pretty wide range of, um, it's a pretty mixed bag of content and also styles. I guess mostly digital on here, but um, yeah, I like I said, I, I I do live art. I do I do murals. I do digital art. You know, private commissions. Uh, work with Johnny Cupcakes is a new one I did. It's it's one of my favorites for the year. It's pretty yeah, cool. I saw this. When was uh, this? Was this recently? Um, funnily enough, it all happened before the COVID thing, but it got put on hold. So there was a whole bunch of um, different theory, uh, wording that was supposed to go for this, but we tried to play it uh, safe and just kept it really plain. But um, yeah, this one just dropped recently. It was a pre-order. So yeah, two of my favorite ones I've done for them so far. But yeah, it's a pretty mixed bag. You can go to my website, dalbegenie.com, have a look through there. It's, some of this is a, a little bit older, but it's it's good to see where I guess my styles evolve from, um, working your way from bottom to top. But yeah, that's that's pretty much in a, in a nutshell what I do. Just just create all day, every day. Yeah, that's <laughs> not, it. Not, not a bad life. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. All right. Well, um, we, we're actually, as we're starting, um, I think some of you will be aware of like Carl T. Webster's brush um, that all proceeds are going towards like Black Lives Matter um, initiatives and grassroots um, groups and things like that. So so we, we bought the brush um, for Dale to use today and gave, gave a donation to them. It's a great it's a great cause. Um, so check it out. If you want to play around with the brush that we're using today, you can get it for free. So if you can't afford to, to donate at the moment, um, you don't need to do that. I think it's still available. It was available last night, and I know it's it's only temporary. But um, if you want to play around with the brush, Johanna's going to share a uh, a link in the chat so you can check it out for yourself. Maybe draw along with us. Um, and that's the the brush that we're going to use today. 
yeah, we're going to uh, integrate it as best we can. It's a, it's a really cool brush because it's got that very like gritty, it's got a gritty feel, so it feels a, a lot like a, a pencil, I guess, the look. So we'll jump into our little file here and uh, we can, I guess we should explain how we're going to try to, yeah, we're going to try to create this piece together. Cool. Um, so basically it's got to be a skull. It's thing that's, that's my, that's my vibe. I want to, I want to do a skull, <laughs> but um, I've got a bunch of kind of like little headwear, eyewear, some hair, a frame, kind of like a few extra things. And I'm just going to, we're going to put it out to chat to kind of decide which, I guess, which feature goes on. So, um, I might just flick through first to give us a little demo of what, what, is happening so there's you know we can have him in a you know we can have him in the the backwards hat we can put him in a bucket hat we can have him in a beanie I'm like just dial this skull back so we can see we know what a skull looks like but there's his little beanie um he's got the you know the cholo locks on he's got some heart glasses because why not why not <laughs> Some Ray Bans because you know he's cool. Everyone, everyone likes a pair of Ray Bans. Um, and then I've got some, so we can have him with his little goatee. <laughs> <laughs> he can have a little mustache. He can have a goatee and a mustache. He can have a beard. And that's all I really wanted to put. So if the selections aren't to your liking, I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> Um, and then I've just got like some framework that we can put. So I've got the super shield, um, just a normal classic shield, chain work, just to, to make it a bit of a tough piece. And then um, if we got time, I've got I've got a snake we can put in, and I've got some flowers that I drew in. But we can uh, we'll worry about those later. So um, I guess while we try to put that out to the to the people, Flynn, maybe I can just start drawing the skull because he is going to be drawn whether we like it or not. Yeah, Let's and also, I'm um, we're using the uh, we're gonna we're gonna try to create this piece. I'm gonna do the whole thing basically using the um, we're gonna do the the Black Lives Matter brush from Kyle, and we're gonna use the symmetry tool up here in Photoshop just to um, help speed up the process a little bit. So I might I'll just start. Uh, I'll start inking this and um, so if you, I don't know if you can read those, this backwards bucket, beanie, like eyewear and that, maybe just have a think of what, what you want to see him in or what you think would look cool and I'll just start going in on this. Nice. And maybe I'll do it. Maybe we can go through and pick like one for each section with chat and that way yeah. we can like get the three and kind of. Do a bit of a yeah, vote cool. between now and the next one. So, what are the top three options? All right, so the, the top ones? three are that's his hat. So the hat can be backwards. So backwards, a bucket hat or a fisherman hat, whatever you want to call it, um, and a beanie or a beanie. So awesome. All right, well, we'll get some we'll get some input from chat and see which way we go. All right, and and while I while I draw, feel free to ask any questions about. Um, the process or anything like that free reign yeah for sure so do, you, do you use do you often use like do you have like a go-to brush that you will often use or will you um, usually use like just the sort of standard system brushes yeah no mostly standard but i do have a bunch from um my my mega packs disappeared unfortunately that's also um from adobe and kyle but um, it's usually just the, the hard round pressure size and then I use these special effects ones which are standard um, half tones and this pressure splatter I guess and then I've got a heap from uh, the guys at True Grit but I, I've just got these loaded at the moment so I'm trying to keep everything as clean as possible. I'm just about to get a new computer so I'm culling everything at the moment. Ooh, fancy. What are you, what are you getting? What's the new computer? Because you're working um, from I a decided, Cintiq, um, aren't you? Yeah, I'm working on a Cintiq, so I decided against uh, an iMac this time. Um, I'm going with a, uh, a Mac Mini because I really don't, I don't do a lot of video or, you know, anything that really requires a, a beefy machine. Mm. 
And I just think the Mac Mini is probably the best bang for buck kind of thing. Yeah, we'll totally. see how it goes. I was surprised oh, actually. Yeah. I didn't know about the Mac Minis, like that they were they actually made them so powerful. Um, but I was working in a studio, even this is even a couple of years ago, and they were all running from Mac Minis with just giant, oh, really? giant like 4K screens, and, and that was it. And that was the whole studio yeah, yeah. set up in the same way. And I was like, I was like, where are your computers? What's going on? And they're like, oh, they're just all running from these beefy Mac Minis. So it is yeah, and, and and look, they they told well the website says they're they're more powerful than ever. So um, stay tuned. Maybe the next stream you see me, I'll be using it, and we'll put it to the test. <laughs> just have like a thousand layers yeah just just to really put it through its paces <laughs> all right so i'm just I drew, so i've used if you want to see this brush is actually really nice it's got like a little bit of um imperfections and stuff which is great like it's getting like a lot of these little um grainy dots and things um i actually don't mind it i i use a similar brush usually with my work lately just to give it some um texture but you know, at 100%, you can see it's got some really nice edges and stuff. And it's, well, on the Cintiq, it's getting like really nice um, pressure sensitivity as well. Like the when it tapers off, it's not completely transparent either. It's mm. It's got a nice end to it. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm just gonna... How, has anyone mentioned what hat they want to see on this guy or...? Um, we've got a straw poll going, yeah, so um, <laughs> jump into, so Johannes shared a straw poll, and then basically whichever one is voted for the most is the direction we'll go today. Alright, that, that works for me. Um, Johanna's like super biased, by the way. She's like, let's choose, let's, oh sorry, I thought you were saying let's choose the, ha the backwards hat. <laughs> I thought, um, <laughs> I thought she was like trying to push everybody in one direction. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Nice. Um, there's a question, I think. Yeah, what model pen are you using? Uh, it's just a Pro Pen. It's just basically the the standard pen that comes with the uh, the Cintiq. Yeah. And it's I don't know. I I always thought I'd I'd test other ones, but I just I'm a creature of habit. It's worked for so long. Like just get whatever's in the box and make it work. That I don't try to stray too far from um, what they give me. Mm. We're just putting some of these details while we wait. And the symmetry tool is great. You can rotate the page. It still stays on like it stays in the one spot. You don't have to worry about always working on this uh, portrait style, I guess. Yeah. And do you mostly work in Photoshop? We've we've had you on the stream using Photoshop and Illustrator, so I know you jump. I know you jump around a bit. But what's your um, weapon of choice? Yeah, it used to be a lot. Like I was very much just Illustrator for for the longest time, um, and then I kind of, I guess, watching streams and watching people work, I realised how much it didn't matter what I was using because. Obviously, in 2020, the, the industry has changed so much that it doesn't matter if you create in Illustrator or Photoshop. I mean, they've both got their limitations, but for what I do, I can send the print out. Most of my work's merch or, you know, that sort of print kind of industry. So printers can use high-res PSDs now. Like, for the longest time, it was always vectors preferred, but um, I, I just think... There's some cool effects in Photoshop that Illustrator struggles to to manage with all the anchor points and stuff. So it's it's a bit of I'd say I'd give it fifty fifty these days on both of them. Yeah. I'm not going to add too much um, shading into this because I think we we'll, we might even give. Uh, everyone a chance to pick the colors that we can just drop into this nice so should we find out what the yeah let's have a look let's see what the... all right yeah let's have a look johanna's the boss basically so when we when we do this she does the straw poll and she can just dump in chat and she can just tell us who wins so there's we're putting all a right. lot of, putting a lot of trust in joe <laughs> <laughs> she's very trustworthy so that's okay 
And that is all that matters. You tell me, you, you just say the word and uh, we'll have a look. Yeah. It'll pop through in a minute. So um, we're going to have a quick Q&A. Like I've got a little timer set up so we can do a quick Q&A if we have if we do have a bunch of questions as we go, or we might just answer, you know, as we are answering questions as we go today. So uh, if we don't need to yeah, sure. break, we'll just keep rolling along. Do you ever name the skulls? Like you're like, yeah, I'm just got to finish <laughs> off drawing Scully today. Like, um, I think I, I do too many. I'd, I'd run out of names. <laughs> right. Yeah. I just, um, I actually, I don't get too attached to any of, of the work that I do lately. I, I try to, um, speaking of bias, I try to stay as unbiased as possible to, yeah. to the end of my work and just, just try to focus on getting a good job done with, uh, the little time that I have these days. <laughs> Um, got another question from RB. Um, Dale, when doing this type of illustration, do you go for accuracy or freeform for expression? Uh, um, that's, that's tricky because I guess when I'm doing this sort of work, it, it varies depending on the other stuff that's involved with this job. So, I mean, if it's a, if I want it to look um, as real as possible, obviously the accuracy is, is what I go for. But um, I think with especially drawing skulls, you've got so much free reign to do whatever you want that it starts to become inaccurate, so to speak. It's so like you start, uh, like the more details I add, the better it looks, but it, it starts to lose its true form. But I guess I'm just trying to go for whatever looks good at this point like if I, if I feel like it gives it enough depth I'll keep adding the shading mm. um, sometimes I'll use I spoke about it on my my last stream sometimes I'll use my little my little um, reference skull and I will try to capture like all the the details and stuff but yeah. sometimes I just have fun with it and just 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 draw just don't even worry about it too much. Mm. Oh, we got a winner. I think it was the bucket hat. Oh, the bucket hat. That's cool. Uh, I was, I was hoping for the bucket hat because then we can put a cool, like, design on it. Nice. Some sort of pattern. Let's quickly shape <laughs> this. All right, and that's a skull. That's, that's that's the bones of the job. Nice. That's a pretty quick skull. Like that symmetry tool comes in super, oh. super handy, right? Like you can just yeah, do that definitely. so fast. I mean, I, I probably would. So at this point, I even probably before this, I would have taken it off and then, you know, you can just switch it off and then start adding like some, some details to make it, you know, I guess less symmetrical. So, you know, just to, to really make it like unique, but um, mm. sometimes it's just too, like it's so quick that I forget that it's on and I'm just on the whole piece and then maybe I'll have to turn it off later. But as soon as I um, turn, you can just hit last symmetry used or last used symmetry and it just goes straight back to the spot and you can go back in. Mm. So it's really, it is a really handy tool. <laughs> All right, so I've got my skull and drag it into this layer. So that's a sketch ink. Now I'm going to go into the bucket hat, create a layer above it. Turn it on. And then just do the same thing. Oops. Do you have like a big hat collection yourself? I've noticed you've I think I've seen you in lots of different hats, so you must have. Yeah, I definitely am a hat guy. It's um, it's funny because I do a lot of work for barber shops, and you know, I I got a lot of love for like a good haircut, but <laughs> no one ever gets to see my hair anyway. It's always under a hat. <laughs> it's just become my thing, Flynn. You know. Yeah. 
Yeah. I've got heaps of hats. I don't wear them very often because my wife doesn't like me to wear a hat. And uh, so basically when I wear a hat, it usually means she's gone away. <laughs> and I'm like, that's, yeah. That's, that party, that's Flynn the party yeah. boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get pretty wild uh, wearing a hat. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. True. And I'm like, yes, but they're always really fresh because they never get worn. So they just sit in my cupboard until... You know, yeah, once, no. once in a blue moon and party, party I, time. Just right here, I can see there's a hat over there. There's one on the shelf. There's one over here. There's four <laughs> hats in here, but there's only one head to put it on. Wow. Maybe I'll just start wearing four at a time. Hat stacking. Right. <laughs> I'm just going to add um, a, like a white layer under this, the under the, um, under the hat. Oh, should we do so a poll? Then, should we do a poll for the next lot while we're doing this one, so we don't? Get oh yeah, there? sorry. So what are the? Um, I don't know. I'll just quickly do this really precise layer build here. Sorry, I even stopped breathing to draw that line yeah, continuously. I, I was holding my breath as well. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I didn't just want gave to up on breathing. Man, that was quick. That's pretty. That's pretty accurate. Like pretty far away. That's like some precise precision. Yeah, no, I, I definitely could have zoomed in. Hey. Yeah, <laughs> just like, like, yeah, freehanded that like really well. That's those um, that's those late nights kicking in, practicing yeah. my uh, <laughs> my lasso tool. Yeah. All right, so I've got a white layer. Okay, so the. Oh, he's got a hat on. Look, he's already feeling like it's pretty. It's a pretty good day. It's the weekend, yeah. Um, for the eyewear, we've got. Yeah, we'll do the the glasses. Oh no, we'll do the the facial hair. Oh, sorry. So we've got the goatee. Goatee. The little. Yep. Oh, I'll just zoom in here. The little goatee thing. Um. And then you can have it with the moustache, so with or without. They can be combined, those two, I guess. Or individual, or the full full face beard. Full face beard, all right. Yeah. Because, you know, when we wear, wear skeletons, our facial hair stays. It's a proven fact. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> I learned that on stream. Yeah, just right now. That's right. Oh, yeah, that, that's our little option. So, goatee, moustache, full face, or goatee and moustache. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, I'm going to add some detail into my bucket hat while, while we do this. So, get on it, chat. It wasn't a lot, there's a lot of, lot of people watching, not a lot of people voting. All you got to do is click the link that um, Johanna will post in, in chat. Maybe you guys are watching on YouTube. Jump over to behance.net slash live and jump in and um, vote. It may be the most important yeah, decision you make today. Yeah, we just don't want to do the wrong thing. We just yeah. want to make you happy. Yeah, that's right. We just want to make you happy. <laughs> <laughs> I like it a lot. We're for the people, Flynn. That's right. That's right. And add another little fill layer. I might zoom in for this one. I've got time. I was under pressure before. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the poll's kicking in in a second, and then you guys can cast your vote. Um, Festus is saying in the in the first Hellboy movie, the skeleton he digs up had a beard. <laughs> See, I wasn't lying. I wasn't <laughs> lying. Oh. Hellboy is an actual documentary, not a movie. Yeah, it's a it's a historical documentary. Um, <laughs> there are lots of what I was doing there. Put a little fill layer there. I'm just creating these fill layers so that what, if we talk color, we can just easily switch out the color instead of uh, having to paint it in every time. Mm -hmm. All right, so that straw poll is up, ladies and gentlemen. So click that. You don't need to log in yeah. or do anything to click it. Just just click the link, um, and then you press a button, which one you want. 
It's reminding right, me. Did you, ever watch, did, you, did you ever watch Walking Dead? It reminds me of Dale. This half. Uh, that guy. You know, I, I think I tried watching it. I I didn't get that much in, not into it because I didn't like it. I just think I it was slow at the start for me. So I I just wanted to see zombies straight away. Yeah. It was it was taking too long, but um, but I didn't really um see a lot of it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I only watched the first couple of seasons. I think it lost itself a little bit, but yeah. Dude has a bucket hat. It just reminds me a lot of him. He looks pretty um, protected, I reckon, this guy. Um, I'm just gonna... So I spoke quickly about... Oops. The, the little, like, um, the other couple of brushes that I, I generally use, and especially on a, a piece like this, I'd, I'd use this, um, the, the spatter brush and the, um, the, the half tones a lot. The half tones I would use depending on, um, the document size, obviously when you draw it. So that's at a hundred percent. Oh, sorry. This is at a hundred percent looking at it. But you can go in and you can play for your settings of these brushes. So you can play with this and get the size to whatever you think's a bit better for that piece. So I, so I usually increase it just to give it a bit more, I guess, breathing space because this, this half tone, if it's too tight when it goes to print, sometimes it will be problematic. So I'll leave it like that. Does it kind of bleed so, together where like, it's kind of hard to see that it's a half tone? Is that what happens? Yeah. Printing? And I think, it, well, I guess it depends on, um, the printer as well. Some printers might be able to hold it a little bit better, but it's always better to have that little bit of space just to yeah avoid that bleeding issue. But um, I just might use it in places like this where it's you know it's giving it a little bit of depth without putting heaps of black in. Put it all on separate layers anyway. I don't like it. It's all good. Oh, I see. Was, wasn't using the symmetry tool. That's. I would have had to take lunch late today. <laughs> <laughs> is this um color half tone from True Grit? Uh no. This is um. This this one is just a standard Photoshop um okay. brush. It's just really, um, it's really effective for getting like a bit of, bit of depth in there. Yeah. How's the poll going, Johanna? We might find a final vote. Want to call it? Let us know. Don't want to overdo it, but yeah, he's he's got a bit more, a bit more depth in there now. It adds a lot, doesn't it? The color half tone. It, yeah, and it's such a simple, like, just a simple thing. Like, it's just literally dots. Like, there's nothing else to it, but it does the level of um like depth that adds i think we, against the hard black it, it really helps as well but you know it's like it's really nice to just look at as well like close up i just like the the dots yeah satisfying as my kids would say what do they say satisfying oh, so satisfying everything <laughs> oh it's so satisfying <laughs> tell you what's satisfying <laughs> to just sleep without you annoying me <laughs> There you we, go. We have a winner when you're ready, but no rush. Yeah, I'm ready. You're ready. All right. Moustache and goatee. Oh, this guy's going to be like looking like a Mexican, um, like a lowrider homie. Nice. I'm okay. I'm very okay with this. 
<laughs> is this the direction you wanted to you wanted to go in? Yeah, <laughs> I was hoping someone would they'd want to combine it. Otherwise, the goatee would have just looked like me. <laughs> self portrait. <laughs> yeah, self portrait. Actual feels. <laughs> All right, so um, <clears throat> I'll create another layer on top. Trying to keep this really organized so it's going to be easy to come to a complete without messing up all my layers. We call it the combo. Nice. And with this brush, it's going to be good because it's got that little bit of um, texture to it. So I, it should be easy to get this feeling like hair, but. Looks like a little bit of a slug. Hmm. Oh, look at that. Just, I pressed my little button. Do you do uh, Movember? Um, I, have, I, I haven't at all ever. And then um, I thought about, uh, like I had a massage for a bit and I was like, oh, actually, I feel like, I feel weird, but I actually don't mind this look. And then I ended up shaving it and my wife said, never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> never grow the so mustache or never shave it? No, uh, never grow it. Yeah. So um, I might just not ever do that again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's for a good cause. So like, how dare she? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I'm not trying to do this very neat because I want it to feel... You know, a little bit bristly. Right. I'm leaving some uh, white highlight, I guess. Then let's have a look. I'm going to have to draw uh, another white layer under that. Just like him. So good these guys do these brushes. Um, and just the, the stuff you can do with them and how much time it saves. Mm. So what uh, are you doing there? What was the layer that you put in then? Uh, that was just a white layer. I just said that when I turned my skull back on. Um, it, it doesn't, yeah, see down under the, under this part, it's a little bit like you can see some half tone and stuff. If I right. just turn it on, it cleans it up so we can see what's, uh, what's happening. <laughs> that moustache is creepy as. <laughs> <laughs> it's so creepy. I think cause it's hanging down cause there's no like skin, right? Yeah. Like, over here. So it's, so it's kind of like hanging <laughs> over the top. It's so, yeah, I'm glad we don't die with uh, our hair still attached. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's so gross. <laughs> All right, and then the same, you know, just flicking lines. Oh, uh, I was supposed to say the eyewear options. Oh yeah, yeah, we should do that. But, um, I'll send them there. They are going to be, I'm going to have to turn off my drawn layers so we can see that thing. Yes, go. All right, so the, the glasses options are the the old school locks, the lopes, whatever you want to call them. The, they're like the old uh, low rider glasses. Um, love hearts, because he's all about loving. <laughs> and then the Ray Bans, because he's a hipster. Nice. So, right. Ray Bans, heart glasses, and the, uh, let's just call them locks. Locks. I never heard that before. Yeah, they're like, um, I mean, very popular with like that, uh, the, the Mexican Chicano kind of like the, 
the, the old school low rider guys, they all they all rep those classes. And I'm just just feeling in that mood lately. There's been a lot of low rider stuff that I've been working on and just I, I live in a dreamland where I'm gonna get one, so I start <laughs> drawing a, I just start drawing a lot of that kind of content, but that's uh it will fit this this guy's look at the moment. Yeah, you can just draw your dreams. You can just draw low riders. That's, that's all I've been doing for 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> Getting there slowly. Nice. Uh, I just got to add the bar. The bottom one probably doesn't need a white layer because it's so dark. Um, okay, and now I think I'm going to add a little bit to this. Um, so that straw poll is in chat. Click that. Give us a vote. Follow your heart. Would love you to answer. No subliminal messaging in that whatsoever. Yeah, now's your time to experience what it's like to be an art director and just <laughs> just take ownership of what I'm doing here. Just put my half tone back. What's the worst experience? Can you tell us like a, a bad experience with like hovering art director? Have you had that experience in your life? Um, I think I haven't had many to be honest, like that are, that are really bad that hover. I, maybe I'm a little bit, I don't know if it's, if they're intimidated and they don't want to stand over me or I make it very clear through my, uh, my actions that, I'm not going to do it while they stand there. Mm. <laughs> like, you know, just make full eye contact. Don't even look at your computer while they're talking to you. Yeah. It seems really unhelpful, but um, also um, it's it's sometimes um, worse for them to sit there and try to walk you through a design or and a bunch of changes. Yeah. Each to their own. I know totally. some people are old school. They like that. Uh, there's always the classic <laughs> ones yeah festus is saying can you make it pop more that's always a good one to hear oh yeah because not not uh, not, not, a, not, not instruction for you but just uh, talking about like hovering no i know so. I, that uh or you know the the old make the logo bigger until it gets so big can we revert back to the original size <laughs> It's always great okay, when it's um, like the, the logo and the brand's mentioned like eight times on like a, something that's as big as a flyer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's always great. Look, um, they spend a lot of money on their brand. They want to, they want the people to see it. True, true. I feel like you needed some eyes just for the minute. Maybe a minute left on the poll, and then we'll get some. We'll get the get the winner. Yeah. How about that? And then we'll keep moving on. Oh, good. We can do that. Johanna was asking, "How do you usually respond when you get questions or requests like that?" Um, like make it pop. I guess so. Is that? Yeah. yeah um, I'm pretty like. I'm pretty open to a client's suggestion like they're they're obviously paying me so i i don't disregard a client's request at, at any time but i do give them my honest opinion and i feel like if you're hiring an artist you should be able to take their their word for what looks good um i mean you came to them for for the job to get done so you should put some faith in like letting them actually do the work yeah Yep, totally. Oh, no. What have I done? I added things where I shouldn't have. <laughs> Fun oh, players. Yeah, see what happens when you talk while you're working? That's why you can't hover art direct. <laughs> yeah, what about you guys chat? Like, let us know if you've had a experience with, with, with that sort of stuff. Ever had, like, I think another classic one that we would get a lot would be like 
getting someone to let, like someone would, like a, either a client or someone would send across a, a version of a design in like in Word or some other program and just being like, can you make the website look like this? Um, yeah. That's always, that's always a fun way to start a project. <laughs> Spend uh, a, a lot of time trying my, to help. One, yeah. One of mine is the, when they, they reference another artwork from another artist and they're just, they got their heart set on it looking like that. Um, yeah. And it, I just can't ever figure out why you came to me if you want it to look like Flynn Tracy's work. Like, right. just, it, and it happens a lot. Mm. So it's that's that's a pretty annoying one. Totally. All right, I think we've got him in a pretty. He looks pretty. Looks a bit um tired actually. This is a great one, Bobby. I'm just gonna shout out Bobby's one. I had a job once where they asked me to make a poster and said the previous year's poster was right to work from and it was in Excel, centered with common widths. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's that's. Hang on, how how did they even um. We need to see this poster. How did they do this in Excel? It's incredible. I'm, I'm it's actually, actually it actually takes like a lot of like creativity to be able to use Excel to do any sort of design work. So that's, yeah, that's actually pretty impressive. I, I, was, I was gonna say, I'm not even mad about it. I'm just, I just wanna see it. <laughs> we do have a winner as well for the, uh, the glasses and it's the heart glasses, which is the correct <laughs> choice. So I'm really proud of you, Chad. All right. They're really, coming, really proud. here they come. Look, like I said, we're, we're for the people here. We don't discriminate at all. That's right. Oh, uh, hang on, where? We've got an influx of layers here. I'm gonna see what I'm doing. All right, love hearts it is. Like All right, we're just going to break in these as well. I'm going to make another layer, take my brush. All right. And for this, I think I'm going to set my, my symmetry tool and, oh, So then once you click it again, you're able to move it. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, like right now. Oh, sorry, that's moving my other thing. All right, so good. Oh, and then, that was like a perfect love heart. I just wasn't wide enough. It just wasn't going to work for me, Flynn. <laughs> All right. Oh, we've done it again. The next poll, we should do that before, oh. like, as we're doing All right. it, as we're rolling. Yeah. All right. We we'll just get. Um, I'm just going to reset this before I forget. Okay. All right. So we also have on the lens though, we've got, so we're going to do eyewear. We've done the skull. We've done the hair. We've got some frames that we can put around in. So we've got like the super shield, a classic kind of just frame shield. Mm -hmm. Or we can put these crazy thick chains. Nice. So was it three? Was it three or two? There's three. So the chains and two shields are like we can call it large shield or small shield. Cool. And I'm going to the glasses. Now, might actually start.
Yeah. Do you also have a giant um, glasses collection, or do you not wear glasses? No, I'm pretty. Um, I'm, I'm not trusted with like things like glasses, like nice glasses. So I always tend to lose them or break them. So I just yeah. buy a cheap one, and then if they break, I just get a new pair. Yeah, I I think I invested once in a, a really nice pair and ended up losing them, and I just I gave up. I was like, I'm not spending money just to burn it. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, you lose it. You lose a certain amount of something like that, and you're like, "All right, I'm not allowed to have nice things." Yeah, nice things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put another. I'm gonna do another white layer here. Oh wow, well, not like that. And if you're just joining us, we're um, here with. Dale Bagini, and we are um, putting love hearts on a skull because, you know, it's Wednesday and that's just what you do. Um, if you're over on YouTube and you want to join us in chat, jump over to behance.net slash live, jump in. Um, we've got some more questions for you, some more straw polls about what we're going to do next. Um, and you can also ask questions as we go. Alright, I'm going to use my half tone again. I'm going to add the lens. At what point do you usually start bringing in color? Like, do you do everything in black and white and then kind of do color as like a second? pass or do you do add the color as you're as you're going to different elements um I, I would usually do the black first get all like the, the line work in and stuff only because i'm just not sure on colors so oh sorry i'd, I'd have a plan for the colors but i think they they're too likely to change and it might slow down that if i start trying to color this get it right I think it might slow down the process. So I'll just do all the black so I know that the piece is, it's solid, I guess, and it looks good. But then I'd worry about the color kind of secondary to that, just just because it probably makes more sense as well to do it like that. So I just change these so I know I've got all the colors in. Then I'm gonna add some reflection. I don't want it to be the same on both sides. Some classic reflection work here. Nice. Uh, Senthil's asking in chat, what brush are you using? Um, so this is a special brush um, created by Carl T. Webster. Um, I think we have a link for it. Um, it's probably buried at this stage. Um, so maybe Johanna can share it one more time. Um, so it's a unique brush created by Carl T. Webster, which who creates lots of brushes um, for Adobe and also for other programs. And um, you can get it for free at the link uh, that we'll share uh, in chat um, so you can try it out yourself um, uh, but you can also donate and all the donations 100% um, of the, the profits will go to towards Black Lives Matter um, initiatives and movements and things um, so it's a really great cause so um, you can try it out have a go it's heaps of fun works in like every app imaginable anywhere that you can think you might want to use a brush it works um, that's crazy yeah he is the brush master. He really is. He's, um, I think there's only a handful of uh, masters, but he's right up there. And also the other brushes are just basic. Aside from that, we've got 
the Black Lives Matter Kyle brush is basically what the outline is done in. Um, the half tones are well, they're all really his, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, they might be his um, as well. <laughs> yeah, so the screen tones or the half tones are, are both Kyle's. You can see them here. Um, 35 and 38, but then there's the hard round pressure size is the uh, the classic um, outlining brush or inking brush, which I'd use. But for this, it's, I think it's, it's actually working pretty well. So I don't want the glasses to stay black. So I'm going to make them, you know, white for now. Oh, I know what We're getting pretty close to Q and A. Actually, just as I said that, we did land on Q and A. I am just about to put a stroke on this, and then I will be ready. Cool. We'll have a bit of a short Q&A because we, we only have till 10 today, so we'll yeah. keep it shorter. Um, All right, I'll just hit save for the first time this whole session. Oh. That's dangerous. <laughs> where, was Chad, where was Chad on this one? So the last couple of streams oh. we've had, we've had, um, I think Ramesh did it as well. Like we had like a two hour stream and he's doing photo manipulation um, oh. and, and about, yeah, towards the last sort of half an hour, I think, uh, our friends in chat were like, oh my God, give me anxiety. Like, please save your work. Like, what's yeah. going on? And I just, of course, there's like autosave and everything, but yeah, I think it's a designer anxiety thing to, to see. What do they call it? They call it the designer twitch where you're supposed to press it all the time. I definitely don't. It's so sad. I, I, I just like to flirt with, flirt totally with danger. That. Yeah. Yeah, it's so <laughs> funny. I do, I, I do that. I won't tell the story of, of that, uh, but yeah, I definitely do the like subconscious yeah, just yeah. auto save. Yeah. You should be able to control things. It's been burnt too many times. Um, <laughs> uh, Festus was asking in chat, besides tattoos, uh, what's the oddest thing you've ever been asked to design for? Or has um, anyone been like, Hey, design this tattoo for my butt or something like what's, have you ever had, cause you get a lot of requests um, for like bespoke people like reaching out to you and saying, Hey, yeah. Like, I've got a, a shop and I want, you know, your aesthetic here or lots of people coming to you for tattoo work and stuff. Yeah, I think the, the oddest request would be, well, I mean, the oddest product I had to design for, which I had never thought I'd do was, um, a, what is it? A, the, the vapes, like the, right. those things people would. I don't, I don't know enough about it, but I had to design on this thing and it was like, they wanted all the detail in the world, but it was going to be like, you know, tiny, tiny thing. Anyway, I was like, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they printed it and it was incredible. It was like this tiny little detailed laser etched design thing. So that was probably the oddest product because it just, it's not something I really think about, but um, mm. as for odd designs, there's probably too too many to name. Like people will like, you know, everyone thinks they've got a really great idea, but sometimes when it comes out as a design, it's, it can look quite strange, but um, yeah, I can't off the top of my head. I think like, you know, I had to do one for a, a, a guy that he wanted a design for a, a road header. I never knew what they were, but they're those big machines that basically dig out the tunnels underground, like they clear the rock basically. And he wanted like a skeleton driving this thing and wanted it all hot rod like, and it was like, this is so strange, but whatever. <laughs> like, wow. It's, it's, yeah, it was great. And he ended up doing like hoodies and stuff for like the road header crew. Like, there's a whole bunch of them that, like, wow. I guess they're just young guys that want want to make their job a bit more interesting so it's, that's kind of cool i don't know if it's odd it's it's just was odd content yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah. I, I really like that do you have a photo of that that would be a pretty cool thing for the portfolio but i guess you don't um, really control the, don't have a, the photo I, that they might take i could probably find the, the design and share it with you i'll find it on my screen over here while we talk and i'll i'll All try right. to share it. it was it was pretty cool to do all right, cool. Well, I've got another question. Um, how do you make yeah. time for personal work? 
Uh, so that's like the 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 number one question of I think every artist would probably struggle to an- not struggle to answer, but have the right answer about what the best me- best method is to that. I I set aside Fridays now to myself. So Fridays are a no work day, basically. It's a no, so I won't do, oh, sorry, I lie. I will still answer emails, but Fridays I'll either be updating my online store, um, focusing on some social content for the week ahead. um, And then personal projects go from Friday to Sunday. If it's a painting or just some artwork I've got in my head, it gives me three days to focus on that so I think I've got the luxury now of telling people how long a job's gonna take so I I do have a little bit of leeway where I can control my time but um I I also think you just need to be a little bit like assertive to yourself and say no nah, I'm gonna sit down and it's gonna be some me time you know instead of you know playing Xbox or going out for a beer maybe just commit that hour that you would have been out socializing to to yourself kind of thing i guess yeah without being you know an anti-social person just allocate like even if it's two hours a week two hours is a, a decent amount of time to concept and create some sketches you know like but that's that's my method might not yeah. work for all like yeah no, that's cool um, I'm just looking for that artwork, sorry. Oh yeah, cool. I got another question. Um, what's another medium that you'd like to explore that's entirely different from your usual process? Oh man, I, I spoke about this last year at, um, at was it Max, Adobe Max? Um, the one we did, the one where you're on stage. That yeah, one? was it? Yeah. Was Sympo- it Max? Symposium, they Symposium, call it. Symposium, yeah, yeah. Year. Yeah. Um, I spoke about wanting to get into, um, I guess, figure design and like um, like modeling and and not modeling myself <laughs> as a model, but just hmm. like creating toys and like vinyl, like art toys and things like that. Like I've got a huge collection of them and I just want to do my own Art by Dale piece where it is... Um, like it's off the computer, it's using clay. I could use a 3D program, but I'd like to use clay and, right. you know, do a, do, a, do a full form thing. But um, that was a year ago and um, <laughs> I was just looking. But uh, I've still got, <laughs> it's still in the box. It's, yeah. I've still got boxes of this clay that I just, it's so hard. So that kind of, that goes against my, how do you make time for your personal projects sometimes? Mm. Sometimes that's no yeah. too hard, but um, or not too hard. It's it's a big ask to learn a, a brand new thing, so that's why that's on the back burner, I think. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. All um, right. Um, should jump back in just to make sure that we do have enough time. Yeah, yeah, just that's time cool. today. And I've got too many files here. I'm not going to find that one. So let's just. <laughs> I'll try to share it on Instagram or something. Oh, cool. All right. Well, we'll jump back across to your desktop. Thanks for the questions, guys. Um, and yeah, we're here for another about 25 minutes or so. Just to give you a bit of a idea of time. Yeah. So we have um, an answer for the frame. Oh, yeah. Do we, um, Jahan, do we have an answer for the, the frame question? Just while I'm thinking about it. Good idea. Um, Just gonna add some. uh, Oh, the dirty moustache is back. Yeah, so dirty. (laughs) Oh, it's chain time. Oh, it's chain. Good choice. That's what they've decided. Yeah, it's chain time. All right. All right. That's his, 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 his,
Like he's him. looking shifty. I like him. He's great. <laughs> right, sorry, I've just noticed my hat. My glasses were way bigger than the hat, so I'm going to just merge these layers. Solid color. And then click the mask layer, and I'm just going to delete some of that so we can still see our cool glasses. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Yeah, he's looking good. Alright. Um, right. so we've got the chain. How much of the chain will we see? Not a lot, but that's cool. We chose the biggest hat and the biggest glasses. <laughs> True. <laughs> Alright, and then put my symmetry back on. Is there another poll we need to do? Um, I guess we can decide, oh, I guess it doesn't have to be a poll, but people can suggest maybe some colors that we can drop into his hat or if they want the banner or not, yep. but then we're going to have to compromise our goatee and come up with something to put in there. I think maybe we can talk about colors to kind of just make this like a little avatar icon kind of style piece mm -hmm. and maybe... Yeah, maybe if they have ideas for like a pattern on the hat, we can try to chuck in. Cool. It's free reign. Um, I'm just going to turn off four of these again. I know I'm not going to see all of this chain, but I'd still draw it anyway because you never know if you're going to resize it at some point is that what you would normally normally do yeah i like that's kind of why i drew the skull in full and like certain parts will be done in full because there's always that chance that i'm gonna say i take that hat off at this point I've, i can still have that skull and it still looks good but it won't, like any of those hats could have went on and work kind of thing, if you know what I mean. So if I've got all of them drawn in full, you can resize and, and move them around a little bit more confidently. Mm. Right. And I think, yeah, like probably color feedback is probably, probably the best. Yeah. Maybe, maybe just I, dump it in, dump it in chat and we'll just see what kind of comes through. Yeah, nothing's too crazy at this point. Yeah. He's a fisherman with a shady moustache and love heart glasses. Gunmetal grey, dodger blue, some mm. suggestions. Not specifically where, but we'll just use those colors in amongst it. Yeah. Gunmetal gray. That's not a. That's a bad. That's not a bad color. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fess is saying you have a steady hand on the pen. Oh, thanks. It's um. It's definitely uh, something I use very, very often, <laughs> and it helps. Sorry, it does help that I've got the Cintiq and I'm drawing directly on the screen because mm. I know it is a bit trickier with um, the Intuos tablet, uh, Intuos tablets. The so one the about this one. Yeah, so the Intuos is is more like a it's over to the side, and you're looking on the screen, yeah. and you're drawing on the right. Um, yeah, but I mean, the Cintiq, you're actually drawing directly on the screen, which you prefer. Yeah, and I guess, I, like, I worked my way up to this to, to kind of having this display, but I think if you master the the Intuos, you're in a good spot because that that takes a lot of practice, like the hand-eye coordination thing. Mm. 
But I know guys out there still doing this stuff with a mouse, so... <laughs> Can, it can be done. You can do it. Yeah, it, where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> oh, kind of just had a blowout. Got some good um, color suggestions, like deep red, almost to the point of being red and purple, like port. Um, Is that for the? Are they saying where, or they just want me to? Just, not not just where, so I guess, I guess that's up to you where you might want to place the colors. Okay. It could look a little bit like Christmas if we just like do it by committee. So maybe you get to choose. Um, and we can go through these uh, again okay. as well. Um, how about some gold on his grill? I like that. Why not? Why like the hell not? I like that. Um, Central was asking um, how, how the painting on both sides. So, so maybe how are you doing it? So how are you illustrating so that the chain is drawing on both sides maybe you could explain that yeah so that is um that's a standard photoshop 2020 feature i think it came out maybe even two years ago um but it's just called uh the symmetry tool and it's up here this little butterfly thing you can see it up the top here you just click it and you can set whichever symmetry you want and just for demonstrations purposes you can have it horizontal dual you can even do mandalas if you just want to do those like cool little I'm just get rid of my chain so you can do things like this oh it's probably going to die on my computer but uh what is it it's like spirograph almost oh yeah i remember spirograph and you can do cool little patterns and then go to your local tattooist and get them to tattoo it on your elbow <laughs> like, <laughs> like spider like, web like, yeah like a spider web or something but yeah so it, it's got a bunch of features you can go in there and have a look but uh obviously doing something i'm um, on a pretty high dpi file at the moment so it's that was just asking too much of my computer <laughs> mm. it's asking a lot we're also streaming yeah. and everything out it's uh yeah it's a lot um yeah it's a big day for the, the little fella <laughs> all right i just gonna i just really realize I gotta put a white layer or else we're not gonna see oh, no. all right quick little yeah, the symmetry up, tool yeah. came in a long time ago but it was a hidden it was a hidden feature and yeah you had to like activate, to activate it activate it yeah yeah um, yeah so it was under like system previews or something or like a yeah. program previews yeah, yeah it was like they didn't uh, I'm not sure why that was, but I I ended up reading about it and then I haven't looked back since. So I was like, that this helps a lot. Mm. All right. I think we have everything ready to go. So we've got our skull. We've got our facial hair. We have our rad glasses. Yes. We have our bucket hat <laughs> and the chain, which... As I thought, you can't really see much, so I might just. Yeah. And again, that's why, like, it's really good that you've done you've done the whole chain, so you know that you can just move correct, it yeah, wherever you want. And I always try to make sure that when I do things like borders, for instance, see, I tr I never tr want the lines to kind of only have a little bit showing, like this part up here. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll just zoom in like only having like tiny bits, I always try to make sure it's very like clear. That's like the graphic designer, I think like sort of fundamental stuff. I think, you know, we're, I was, we're always taught like either off or on, but not like yeah. kind of a little bit. Yeah. Like, Cause it's like think, a mistake and kind of ruins your eye a little bit. Yeah. And it's definitely like sometimes like you don't want like a line to follow into a, another line otherwise you yeah your eye kind of misses where the edge of the skull and the chain is kind of thing so i try to be as conscious about that as possible but sometimes i just get caught up in it but all right so they said red at some point there was a red yeah like a deep well deep. i definitely think the glasses can get the red nice Let's just drop a deep red in. 
I'm just gonna get some colors in. I know that they said they like gold for the teeth. And usually I would just go What is this? Like mustard kind of color. Is Getting a, Asbestos is saying, getting a Ghost Rider vibe. Ghost Rider, yeah, the chain, definitely. The chain. Yeah. Sure. Cut some of this back. I always found like gold and silver like really hard to do. Like, just keep it looking yeah. like yellow or gray. Yeah, I think it's, unless you can, like, I mean, unless you know, like, when you print it, it's going to be, um, like, a metallic gold. I always question it a little bit. Like, I don't have full faith in it. But we're going to make this look shiny. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to do this. There's lighting coming from everywhere to early this. <laughs> Just about, I guess, having a lot of things happening in there. You know, when you look at reflections, it's like there's black, there's all the the yeah. surroundings going through, so. Oh, that I, I don't know how it's translating. It looks brighter on my screen than what I can see on the the thing here. So just believe me that they're gold, okay? <laughs> it's like the color, like colors on on different screens. Like I've got two screens here, and then I've got my Mac screen, and the colors look different on every single one. Yeah, depends on how you're like calibrated. But yeah, it's looking great mm -hmm. on the on the Mac screen because that's like the really nice right. like retina. Well, I'm gonna leave that like that. So we'll call this gold. Um, and what was, there was a, oh, we'll do maybe the, the hat and gun metal or like dark gray, I guess. Yeah. There was like gun metal gray. The blue. And then there was also blue, which was one of the earlier ones. So yeah, blue would be cool. Maybe I'm going to do, okay. I'm just, let's go. Man, that's gun metal to me, but. Do they mean metal, like actual metal? Because I just picture a dark grey, so I might just leave it like that. And then I'm going to get that blue. And I'm going to draw it as like a little highlight on here. Break up a little bit of that. It's like a little little blue highlight. Yeah, like just a little feature on the hat. And then we'll do one up here. So we've got a little bit a little bit less than ten minutes, probably about eight minutes left. Um just to let you know. Yep. I just want to make sure um everyone knows that ninety nine new conference is on tomorrow. Um or today <laughs> in the States. Um, and it's all being streamed live here on Behance. So you can watch it all for free, watch it all live. Um, and there's some pretty cool stuff coming up. So um, I've had a sneak peek at some of the some of the things and there's some really awesome stuff coming up. So um, I'll be getting up early to, to check out at least half of it um, before our stream tomorrow. And we'll be streaming right after as well. So we'll be here with Ellen Portis. Uh, which is very exciting with our Jackie Winter group uh, series. So that's still going on, bringing some uh, amazing artists. Um, but yeah, check it out. Like it's definitely worth having a look. Um, if you're not familiar with 99U, it's like a physical conference that, that happens. I think it usually happens on the East Coast, usually New York. Um, and I've never been, and I'm sad that I've never been because it's pretty cool. They get some great speakers, so check it out. 
that's cool that it's all online. Yeah, it's such an interesting time, right? Like with all these all these things that have had to be forced, obviously, to go online, but then so many are, like so many have become free, which means yeah, and they're like a hundred percent focusing on the digital experience. So it's probably going to be better than ever, right? Because there's not the physical event to to deal with, which is the primary goal. Um, I, I I just wonder what happens to events moving forward. Do, do people get used to digital experiences and then they're like oh well i'm not gonna pay if i can just watch it or do people still miss real time you know sitting yeah. down and experiencing the network part of it because that was really important right yeah totally yeah yeah i don't know who knows how it's gonna go like i think it's there'll slowly definitely be a demand for like the, the the digital version to be top tier i think i think we're heading that yeah. way and it's a safe probably a safety thing as well for for events like what if something happens again we want to make sure that you're going to want to make sure that you can you can go ahead because so many things have been yeah canceled, exactly canceled obviously which is not what you want so i just went and colored the chain because i i just got nervous when he said 10 minutes <laughs> i can make you more nervous and tell you that it's a lot less than that now yeah i know right <laughs> maybe keep that that info to yourself yeah right <laughs> This has all come together so quick and with um, chat interaction as well. Um, it's been cool. I'm glad that, uh, really proud of you, chat, for picking the, the Love Heart glasses. Definitely the correct choice. <laughs> it definitely doesn't look like creepy at all. <laughs> Just going to add some highlight to this. Where's that little, I was looking for the clock. It's like one of those challenge shows. <laughs> yeah. Do you think much about like where the source of light might be coming from? I uh, generally I do. I I would have some sort of consideration. But um, right now I'm just trying to uh, make it look as finished as possible. But I think I'm going to run out of time. So I'm, I'm just going to pick colors for the skull. And I don't know what I want to do. And behind my frame. I just want to put like another little oh. Oh, gosh. Where do you normally get your colors from when you don't have like a live stream throwing suggestions, throwing suggestions out? Do you have like a go to? Like color palette or resource or do you kind of eyeball um, it or yes somewhat just eyeball it unless yeah it's a again a client job where they've specified otherwise i'm just um yeah i just pick what kind of feels right for the job but um in sometimes i just use the um adobe color swatch the the website mm. and you can search for like color inspiration and stuff which is really cool yeah and I'm just going to add some dark in here. Again, didn't put the symmetry to on. It's not needed to move like this. And I'll mention again for those that may have missed it at the beginning. Um, yeah, so we were using the. Um, Carl T. Webster, Black Lives Matter brush, check it out, download it, play around, donate if you can. Um, it's a great cause, check it out. And it's also a really cool brush. So it's a lot of fun. Um, it's nice and gritty. Yeah, it is really cool. And then I'm just gonna use another one. This is another brush from, this is a true grip brush, but it's like a, a grain shader. 
uh, not a grain shader, lithotone pattern shader. But I'm gonna pull. Got about maybe two minutes before we have to say our goodbyes, just to let you know. That's all right, because we are almost done. Oh, that's cool. I think that's a wrap. That's our guy. Nice. We didn't get a pattern in, but he's done. He's he's looking sus, and that's all that matters. He's, have, he's having a good time, though. That's, he that's definitely cool. is. He's had a good life. <laughs> that's, su that's super awesome, man. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, that's all good, man. Um, thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. I want to leave this up for a minute as we're saying our goodbyes, I think, because it's super cool. Check it out. This is, this is what you wrought, chat. Um, the, the love heart glasses it's such a combination it's so good um <laughs> really enjoy it and thanks for making it so interactive and, and fun and um and thank you chat for for jumping in and um with all your suggestions and a lot of banter today like i said um before uh check out 99u i know i know a bunch of you in there are going to check it out um it's it's pretty cool it's a pretty amazing resource that it's like there and free um with the um you know some of the creative leaders from the globe um so definitely take advantage of it. if you can't watch it live obviously it's all going to be available on replay and everything we'll be here um after after 99u uh, with our regular programming uh, we're here for the week and thank you so much for hanging out with us and dale thank you until next time keep well and thank you so much for such a fun stream today thank you very much Flynn. we'll do it all right see everyone